In the past video, we took a look at the case of cruise control, but from a static model perspective. Now let's derive the differential equation that we would use for this type of problem. Um, and then as with any model, we're going to use a model that's representative, but simple. Uh, it will characterize the important behaviors, but not characterize all behaviors. And in this case, this means that we're going to be looking at a block with a certain mass, the same mass as the car. We'll have an applied force U that represents the torque uh, of the engine. And we'll have a drag friction term due to the interaction of the tires to the road. And the variable of this uh, dynamics will be the variable X, which will represent the displacement of the car along a linear road. And clearly this is an abstraction, but it does provide us with a useful model uh, in order to characterize the important behaviors. So as with many of our systems, we'll start with Newton's law, which is force is equal to m, uh, mass times acceleration. And so F is the net force. So in this case, it's the force the applied force U minus the drag, which pulls the, the car in the opposite direction, opposing the motion. So minus X dot. And that's equal to ma, so mass times x double dot, which represents the acceleration. If we just reorganize that, we get all of the x terms on the left-hand side and the forcing term u on the right-hand side. And in this case, because we're interested in cruise control, which is a speed-related uh, controller, we can instead write this equation in terms of the velocity v um, which is, in fact, x dot. And so that simplifies it from being a second-order differential equation to a first-order differential equation in V. And so we won't have the tools in order to finish the analysis that we did with the static model. That's why we use the static model to understand kind of the, the key ideas. We're going to need some more tools before we can do that. But just to see where we're going, um, we can start with this first-order differential equation uh, in V. And uh, essentially, the behavior of the velocity v is going to be determined by the input u, as well as the natural dynamics of the system. And so if you remember back from your differential equations course, you'll recall that if u, the applied force, is, is an exponential function, e to the st, then we can assume that the solution is going to be something of that same form, e to the st. And so we plug in V0 e to the st. V0 just represents the initial condition of the velocity. We plug that in for V, uh, which we know the derivative of that. That's s e to the st, so that s just comes down from the exponent. And we plug in the form for the input u as u0 e to the st. And so plugging that in, you notice that all terms have this exponential that cancels leaving us just with the terms v0 and u0 and the rest of the constants of the equation. And so what we will be doing for a large part of this course is to develop relationships that express the output or the, or the response of the system in terms of the input. And so there will be a term that we'll just right now just generically call the mapping a mapping and that provides us with insight on how the input affects the output so using those tools we will then over the course of the the entire class uh, characterize open loop behavior and closed loop behavior depending on how we decide to form u in order to solve this uh, original cruise control problem. 